Hello, you're watching Global Insights, where we speak to experts from around the world on issues making headlines. I'm Wu Young. Now, building competence in key technologies is the goal of virtually every country as we live in a rapidly changing world where yesterday's technology is pretty much outdated tomorrow. Now, artificial intelligence and robotics have arguably been the biggest keywords when it comes to innovation. And in order to discuss how South Korea is moving forward and also looking to increase cooperation with other countries, we look to discuss this with Kim Song Soo or Eric Kim of, um, and the jump professor at the School of International Studies at Hanyang University, also founded and CEO of Data Crunch Global. We also have joining us Mihai Bordin, Head of Economic and Commercial Affairs at the Embassy of the Republic of Slovakia. Now, um, thank you both for joining us. And well, my first question goes to you, Eric. And well, as mentioned, um, you know, virtually every country is looking to be the world's number one when it comes to artificial intelligence. And uh, in this regard, I mean, what do you think are some of South Korea's strengths? Where, where has it been seeing progress in this field? Um, indeed, AI is a hot topic. According to IDC, um, by 2024, the AI market will grow um, to 554 billion US dollars. So it's a large market. Our strength in Korea is that we have large conglomerates that we can utilize the uh, company capabilities and core resources to drive the technological development. Um, meaning that we are good at selecting and focusing our resources and capabilities in, in for, um, to um, develop the technology. So that is our strength. Um, we still have a long way to go because we still have a gap um, from the frontier technology but we are catching up very, very fast with the Korean firm DNA to um, grow as a fast follower. Oh, right, I see. And as mentioned, Korea has been very um, adept at being a fast follower of technology. But mm. um, there's been some, you know, uh, that it still has a long way to go, it seems, mm. when it comes to software. You know, we have mm. strengths in hardware. So what's the fundamental issue here and how can we move past this, do you think? I think the fundamental issue is the market perspectives of how we appreciate intellectual property and um, human created work. Um, we have dramatically changed our perspectives towards the software industry during um, the COVID and the current um, technolo AI technological hype and that we appreciate our um, software engineering forces, but we have a still have a significant gap in terms of the pricing in the market and also in the pricing of the wage gaps between um, US-based software engineers and Korean-based software engineers. So we first have to overcome this problem to attract core talents to Korea. Secondly, uh, the strength that we have is that we have very, very good research um, institutes. For example, Kaistor SNU is leading the um, software research and that is our very good strength. Again, we should collaborate with the large conglomerate um, DNA and the good research institutions that we have to cultivate um, the core software engineer forces in Korea. Right, I see. It's really about nurturing those, nurturing and attracting those core yes. talents. In addition, uh, we have to build the architecture mindsets and the integrative mindsets of the software engineers because our software engineer um, talents are mainly based on doing programming, but um, the great software engineer uh, standards would be the ability to architect and create new solutions and think in new ways. So that is a very essential aspect that we have to focus for our software um, engineer labor force development. All right, that's the step to be taken there. And well, my question to you, Michal, now, you're hoping to, uh, as you know, representative of the Slovak Republic, you're hoping to work more with Korean companies, innovators in the uh, field of uh, artificial intelligence and all sorts of technology. And well, when it comes to these diverse uh, areas of emerging technology, where do you see the biggest, uh, say potential for um, South Korea and Slovakia to cooperate? Yes, um, 
We've seen a huge uh, uh, development that has been made in Korea for the past decades in technology, uh, in different technologies. Uh, what we see uh, as a great potential is robotics and AI, as uh, Eric has already mentioned. Um, this is the place. Uh, uh, this is the place where the potential in Slovakia is. We s we saw in the past. Uh, 20 years, a huge inflow of Korean companies coming to Slovakia. Um, I can mention one of the major um, Kia plants that is in uh, that is based in Slovakia, which is using mostly robotic technology and AI. Um, but of course, there is uh, other. Not only automotive sector is uh, important. Uh, there, is, there are other uh, sectors like uh, agriculture, nuclear technology, uh, um, packaging services, where uh, robotics and AI can be used. And uh, this is uh, this is uh, um, a huge uh, area where uh, which has not been still discovered in Europe. I see. And well, in terms of making Korean technology more global, uh, Eric, in order for South Korea's uh, SMEs to really make their solutions more international and businesses to expand on the global realm, what do you think are some key steps that need to be taken? Uh, first of all, of course, English is very important. Um, the reason why we have strong markets in Hong Kong or Singapore in Asia is because they are basically English speaking companies, uh, countries. So. It's important that we, if in order to go global, we have to um, set or at least um, accept the English-speaking working environment in the company. And also, we have to change the mindsets of how we perceive the markets when we um, start the business. For example, in Silicon Valley, uh, when a company starts a company, they don't consider the domestic US market. They, de by default, they consider the global market. And all these strategy and technological developments are based on that roadmap. So um, in order to go global, you have to be born to be global, which means that um, you have to start the company in a global setting so that you can um, go global in the future. And of course, the government and the industry also have to think about a lot of ways to collaborate um, to help the Korean companies go global in that perspective. I see. So I like what you said there about having to be um, having a global mindset by default. I mean, yes. that sounds very important. And Michal, well, when you um, look at these Korean companies, I mean, right, uh, in the domestic environment, maybe in some other countries that may be expanding, it's always uh, red tape and a lot of paperwork that really hinders them from, you know, broadening their presence overseas. And well, I know you're looking, you're hoping to get some Korean companies involved in Slovakia. And what, what kind of uh, benefits would they reap from um, setting up shop there? Um, Slovakia has uh, created uh, many uh, options or benefits for companies that uh, that are willing to invest in Slovakia. Uh, state uh, um, uh, regional governments have created different uh, incentive schemes to support them uh, to streamline the process, how to enter the market, to uh, to um, save time uh, for their operations rather than to concentrate on bureaucracy. Uh, this has been on the market for quite a while, and we see a large inflow of uh, Korean companies. There is about 100 companies for the past 20 years that have uh, found their uh, spot and uh, uh, the, uh, let's say space in uh, on the Slovakian market. So uh, there is uh, there is uh, plenty of uh, opportunity and uh, we hope uh, Korean companies will uh, find it interesting. I see and um, Eric uh what would it really take? What kind of regulatory changes do you think are needed for South Korean um, companies to really develop and commercialize their products? Um, first of all, Korea has a very um, core strength in going global. We have Samsung, LG, and other conglomerates that have succeeded as a Korean business model to go global. So um, we have to fully utilize that DNA. In order to do so, um, we have the regulatory requirements to not um, restrict the corporate activities, which um, I suggest that we do not introduce a negative system uh, regulating things um, um, that we cannot do, but introduce a positive system, which means that we can do anything except for these kind of things. Because there are a lot of gray areas in technological development, whether it can be um, complied by the law or the current regulatory uh, requirements, and those should be um, a 
you know, co-initiative with the government and the industry to solve um, such regulatory requirements. Right, so Eric, um, how do you see the potential of uh, Korea in ro the robotics industry going forward? Um, the robotics industry is a fast-growing industry. According to market and markets in 2020, um, the robotics market was about 100, uh, 836 million US dollars, which we expect that it will grow to 5 billion US dollars by 2025. Um, this anticipates a 43% annual growth, so it's a fast growing market. We traditionally are very strong in the machinery and um, hardware industry, so we see a huge potential for this market. Uh, we still have a little bit of catch up to do with the um, global leading uh, robotics industries um, that has been playing a strong role. But we also saw um, very important initiatives over the, over the couple of years that Hyundai Motors acquiring Boston Dynamics and other collaborative ro robotics industry growing. So we expect that this will be one of the core um, growth engines for the fourth industrial revolution in Korea. I see. Wow. I want to see. And I'd love to get your um, insights on this as well, Michal. Um, I mean, is there a market for South Korean robotics in Europe? Uh, certainly there is. Uh, as the uh, European Union uh, has got about 550 million inhabitants uh, with the potential, as already mentioned, in different areas. Uh, there, is a, there, is a, there are many institutions, universities, uh, already existing companies that are working in this field, and uh, we see a huge potential in this market. Of course, as already mentioned, there are existing companies, Korean companies are, that are already uh, on the market, but we would like to encourage uh, different Korean uh, AI and robotic companies to come to Slovakia to see, to settle down, and to uh, uh, it could be considered as a gateway to European Union, and the potential is enormous. Right, so Mahal, what kind of developments can we look forward to in the new year in terms of uh, South Korea and Slovakia's technological cooperation? We had a great opportunity to have uh, two uh, great visits from Slovak technical universities uh, in uh, Slovakia visiting uh, Seoul and their counterparts in, uh, in South Korea. Uh, the, along with them came as well AI and robotic companies. Uh, we have visited uh, exhibitions, Robot World, Smart Tech. Um, we see that the, the links uh, between uh, our countries is being actually created and uh, we see some progress there as well. Uh, nowadays, we can uh, uh, we experience two uh, major robotic companies uh, that have visited uh, Slovakia and already are starting to work on on um, uh, mutual projects. Um, next year, we would like to do, do it the other way around, along uh, with uh, uh, with our uh, partners like Ministry of Economics. Uh, um, Honorary Consulate of Korea in Jelina, uh, City of Jelina, Municipality of Jelina, and uh, other uh, technical universities. We'd like to visit Korean companies. Uh, we would like to visit, uh, we want to introduce uh, Korean companies directly in Slovakia and to show them our uh, possibilities and options to settle down, to create their businesses, and to uh, expand into European Union. I see. Well, thank you very much uh, for your time this morning. And well, that was Kim sung a adjunct professor at the School of International Studies at Hanyang University, and Mihai Bordin, Head of Economic and Commercial Affairs at the Embassy of the Slovak Republic. Again, thank you both for your time this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Also, thank you very much to our viewers for tuning in. Global Insight will be back at the same time on Arirang TV tomorrow. Do tune in then. Until then, have a great day. Bye.